these individuals are are very genuinely interested in, in the questions that we're dealing with, uh, the question of student access, the questions of sustainability, uh, the, the questions particularly of diversity and how this institution uh, in a very true sense represents the, the state and the, in a sense the future of the state as it uh, uh, attempts to, to bring students from all backgrounds in, onto our campus. I believe it was yesterday I saw a report indicating that uh, in comparing countries, what percentage of the citizens have a college degree, the United States had gone from number one to number 12, mm -hmm. uh, which was a shocking statistic. There's a lot of discussion about education this week. It seems like the contract, the social contract, is not working. That the, the citizenry, the state provides this basic mm -hmm educational development. Uh, it's hard to drain the swamp while you're fighting the alligators, but is there discussion of trying to rebuild that discussion, to rebuild that social contract? Actually, Dr. Hogan has, has mentioned, has talked about that, the, the need to, and I, I think this is something that every generation has to renegotiate. The, 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 the social contract with the citizens of the state that paying for higher education in a sense making higher education affordable to all citizens is a worthy investment of one's resources uh, the uh, the challenge is great because the needs within our state are enormous the uh, the human needs uh, we were talking at our table about families earlier and the challenges that uh, that many have uh, and the 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 obligations that the state has to meet those needs and the the uh, also at the same time providing for for education but i like abraham lincoln begin believe have to believe that the future in a very real sense has to begin with education and moving the capacity of our of our population forward the debate seems to be around the question of whether education is a personal benefit and thus should it be a personal cost or is it a public benefit and it should be something that benefits all of society and at the same time the cost of should be borne significantly by all of society. I, I want to be clear, I come down clearly and very strongly on the, on the side that education is a benefit for all of society. Sure, the individual who receives the education is better able to have a successful life, but because of what they do, it should also raise the, the, the economic opportunities and the, beyond that, the quality of life uh, for all individuals. Uh, that was the vision for the land-grant mission, the land-grant university, was to provide education so that the nation could become more literate and thus a more functional society. And I think it is a contract that has to be renegotiated and I, I think the president is committed to those kinds of conversations. Hello, um, my name is Celeste Larkin. I'm an undergraduate here. And I'm sorry I came late. I was coming from class and I'm an undergraduate, so I'm typically late. Um, but I wanted to ask about um, a couple of things. I caught the end of what you were saying um, in your talk and it talked a lot about economic development um, and how we owe it to the state to be like a, a kind of leader in the economic development of Illinois. Um, but I wanted to emphasize that I'm pretty sure our mission statement as a school is not just labor, but also learning. And I think there needs to be a lot more introspection in this institution on the part of the administration as well as the Board of Trustees on what we do as our mission uh, entails to emphasize learning. And learning as a public good, like you were just saying. Um, and, I, and I question what you were saying earlier about President Herman um, uh, about um, his, so his focus on accessibility. Um, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, not Herman, Hogan. President Hogan and his, his social emphasis on accessibility to our institution because my understanding is that he doesn't see out of the realm of possibilities another tuition raise for next year. And that terrifies me. That terrifies me as a student who's about to graduate from the school, who has benefited from all the luxuries here, but who sees that the freshman class is increasingly 
less and less accessible um, to minority students, uh, students of working class families. And this is, I mean, this is a public good. This institution is public. And so what are we doing to serve the public and what are we doing to change that instead of keeping the status quo of depending on students' money to keep this institution running? So I wanted to know specifically like what you see President Hogan doing and what you see the administration doing to protect this, that half of our mission statement. I think clearly the president is engaging with, with state leaders, the, the various groups in the state who are trying to find solutions to the state's budget challenges. Uh, the Board of Trustees is as well. I, I think the, uh, uh, the, the, he is clearly committed to going to the legislature and he's done this. The, the challenge is going to Springfield and arguing for money is when there are many, many others there who have very real needs as well. How do you make, how does the legislator make, make those decisions? I think our challenge is to present the most persuasive case that, that we can. I, I truly uh, come back to agree with you that it is labor and that's, that's part of our, of our history, uh, but it's learning that enables a functional society and it's learning broadly writ across all, all areas, of, all domains of the campus. It, it's not just those that, uh, that, uh, that create the latest widget, if you will, uh, but it's those that create the latest piece of literature or the latest uh, play or something that, that adds enjoyment and pleasure and in so doing also economic activity to the state. Uh, I think all of us in positions of leadership today are challenged to grapple with this very, very difficult question of tuition increases. Uh, on the one hand, we have a, an institution that's one of the best in the world. And it's one of the best in the world because we've got uh, high quality faculty, we have the best in the that we can afford. And uh, this past year, just to give you an example, uh, we had 25 of our faculty leave us. The difference between what we were paying them and the jobs that they went to on average was $60,000. So you see some of the challenges that, that we're grappling with day in and day out as we, as we look at our, our budget. Uh, so uh, the, uh, uh, in some cases these are private institutions, but in some cases they're also public universities in other states that perhaps have a stronger social contract. Uh, and a larger commitment on the part of the state to support higher education. I have no doubt we are a great university. My concern is about the future and all the comments you're making point to the question.